Welcome to the first example from chapter 11. Um, and this is the only one from the first several sections of the chapter. Most of the example problems we're going to see have to do with buoyant force. Um, it's the main problem type that comes out of this. But this problem we're going to do a full video for so that we have a sense of how to use this um, variation of pressure with depth equation and making sure we understand some of these different units that we might see for pressure, especially, especially for atmospheric pressure. So when we saw this in the lecture video, uh, we asked ourselves just by looking at the picture uh, shown, we can figure out whether the gas or the air, the atmosphere, is at a higher pressure by thinking about how those two gases are pushing on the mercury, the um, liquid mercury in the tube. Because all of these pressures have to balance um, at some point, and so the edge of the mercury on the right side and the edge of the mercury on the left side are telling us where um, that balance occurs. So for the gas, because the mercury rises up higher on the gas side, the gas is not pushing nearly as hard as the air is. And so we can already tell that the gas pressure is going to be lower than the air around it. So let's draw what this looks like to make sure we have a sense of why that is. Because there's a there's couple of possibilities here. So let's say that the um, air The air mercury boundary is right there. And if it's air here, what that means is that's going to be atmospheric pressure. Okay? Now there are a couple of possibilities, and I want to run through them before we do the quantitative problem here. If we had a gas that was at extremely high pressure, it would be pushing all the mercury down and the level of um, the gas mercury boundary on the left would be below the air. That would be if the gas pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. Okay. We could have a situation where it's even on both sides. In that case, the gas pressure is the same as equal to the atmospheric pressure. Or we could have the situation as shown on our um, slide here that the um, boundary is such that the gas pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure. That the gas is not pushing as hard on that liquid mercury. So the key thing with the fact that this is mercury, Hg is the um, elemental symbol for mercury, the fact that it is above the equal watermark by, in this case, 35 millimeters, means that what we're thinking about in that particular situation is that the difference between the gas pressure and the atmospheric pressure is 35 millimeters of mercury. If we are using that as our um, gas, if we're using that as our pressure unit, then that actually becomes a very simple calculation to do. But because this no longer looks like a simple picture, I'm gonna erase it now that I've shown us what those three possibilities could have been for a problem like this. And we may see different ones in the future um, on assignments or quizzes or whatnot. Okay, so let's get back to the situation as it currently stands. We have the gas pressure way up here. That's our gas pressure. And we have the atmospheric pressure way down here. That's because there's gas above that boundary and there's air above that one. Okay, And in between, we have the millimeters of mercury, Hg. Now, if we think about our situation here, we have that pressure below equals pressure above plus 
plus rho g h. That's our standard um, set of, or that's our standard tool, our standard equation. Now if we look at this, we need to understand, and this is something that I see students um, make mistakes on because we aren't thinking critically about what these things mean. Pressure below and pressure above, those have meaning. We know what the words below and above mean. We need to not forget about that in this problem. I see a lot of students who always set the atmospheric pressure to above because it's what they've seen more often. But in this particular case, look at where the atmospheric pressure is. Out of these two locations, this is the one that is physically below. It is lower. And this is the one that is physically above. It is higher. So we never want to assume that one, that one of these is always the atmospheric pressure because that is not a assumption that we can make. There will be so many different situations we could have that are roughly the same for both of these. Instead, every time we look at the picture that we have, the one that is physically higher on the page is the above, the one that is physically lower is the below because that's what those words mean. Okay, so in the two different units systems that we have, if we are using millimeters of mercury units, so millimeters of mercury is a type of unit available to us. The pressure below, we could look up the standard atmospheric pressure in millimeters of mercury. And that is 760 millimeters of mercury. That's just the standard value for atmospheric pressure. Then the pressure above is our unknown gas. And then here's the really important part. When we are using millimeters of mercury, what we have done is we've decided that we know that the density is mercury. And we know that um, G is supposed to be 9.8. And we know that hydro uh, the, um, <laughs> hydrogen, the, we know that the height is supposed to be in meters normally. What we've done instead is we've said, okay, ignore that term when we are using these units. We just have to say what the height difference is in millimeters of mercury. And that's 35 millimeters of mercury. So we can subtract 35 from both sides. And we get 725 millimeters of mercury is our gas pressure. Okay, so if, if these units don't really make sense to you, uh, if you're not sure why we're going from a height unit to a um, pressure unit, that's perfectly fine. We don't have to use those. I'm going to show us how this works again using our standard units and making sure we can see the differences. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. If you didn't have a chance to write it down, there's a rewind button. So the picture is the same with rho, g, and h here. But the atmospheric pressure in standard units is 101,300 newtons per square meter. So 101,300. The pressure above in this situation is our gas pressure that we're trying to look for. And then our um, density here is the density of mercury. So 13,600. G is 9.8. And that height has to be in meters. So 35 millimeters, we can divide by 1,000 millimeters in one meter. And so we will get that the height is going to have to be 0 0.035. That's way too small on the side. Let's try this one again. So 0 0.035. Okay. So if we add, if we multiply all of those together, so 13,600 times 9.8 times 0 0.035, we get. 4,665 when I round. 
So I'm going to um, subtract that from both sides. So what we get here on the left, 101, 300 minus that value, is 96,635. So I'm going to round that to 640. That's in newtons per meter squared. And that is our gas pressure. So again, all we've done is we've taken the left side minus this term. It's color-coded black so that we can follow it around. And we get 96,640 newtons per square meter. And that's our answer in standard units. Now it's worth noting something important here. We can do a unit conversion on this just so that we see that the two answers that we got are equivalent. The way that that works is we can say, okay, one atmosphere in newtons per square meter is that value, and one atmosphere in millimeters of mercury is 760 millimeters of mercury. So those newtons per square meter units cancel out, and we can double check, and we get 725.0 even, 0 .00 millimeters of mercury. The same thing that we got in the first portion of this video. So if the millimeters of mercury unit doesn't make sense to you, that's fine. Just use our standard equation with standard units. But it is equivalent and it is an answer that we can use that when we look back at the first part of this, all we had to do was take seven, uh, 760 millimeters, subtract it by that 35 because the gas pressure was smaller by that much, and then we got our answer without having to do any more complex um, calculations here. So it can be really helpful, but only if the tube itself is actually filled with mercury. So this is one that you can always look back at and compare to other uh, problems in the practice set. And we, um, we will not see the millimeters of mercury unit that often, uh, but it is something that is used throughout, um, throughout physics and, and meteorology as well. All right, I will see you in the next video.